Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Trail Pass. So you've seen me riding this four-wheeler all season and it is my new to me Yamaha Kodiak 700 uh, in the special edition color scheme. So about the this vehicle it is the special edition but honestly it is just what I said it is more of a color scheme. You can see we have the black painted plastics, the black aluminum wheels, and uh, that's really all that is special about this special edition. But uh, if you've been watching the channel or following us for a while, you may have noticed that, you know, in the past I have ridden a lot of Can-Ams and I have had very good luck with them. So why did I sell my Can-Am Outlander 570 Max XT for this Yamaha Kodiak? That's actually what we're going to talk about today. So this Yamaha Kodiak 700 is a 2017 model, and if you're fluent in Yamaha, you'll know that 16 through 2018, that they ditched the 686 and went to a 708cc engine. Now, I've heard all kinds of different rumors and, and thought processes about this, but overall, it was not produced by Yamaha. It was produced what they call by Subaru uh, about the 708cc that was in the 2016 and 20 through 2018 models. Uh, it is a little bit bigger displacement, but it makes more or less the same horsepower. And they had the 686 before this, uh, and then after 2018 into the 2019 model year, they actually went back to a newer reworked version of that 686cc engine. Now, uh, some people will claim that these 708s are pretty unreliable, and uh, that remains to be seen. I got this vehicle with about uh, just under 800 miles on it. We're sitting at over a thousand now. So uh, I've had it since January. I put, you know, 250 miles on it, something like that this season, uh, which admittedly is not a lot uh, with the birth of my son and everything else. I uh, haven't had a chance to ride a whole lot, but so far I am very, very impressed with this machine. I do really, really love the Yamaha CVT. It is really, really good. I also like having the dual handbrakes again. So uh, you do have a front and a rear handbrake uh, versus you know the new Can-Am and Polaris models only have a single handbrake that actuates both brakes. Uh, but you, on these Yamahas, you do still have both handbrakes and a foot brake, uh, which is really, really nice. It uh, gives you a lot of different options on the trails. And uh, in my opinion, it gives you a little bit more control. It might be a little bit more intimidating for a newer rider, but I think for an experienced rider, it is a really good advantage. So one of the main reasons I bought this vehicle is I actually look on Marketplace a lot, as I'm sure a lot of you all do, and this vehicle came up for sale. So I was admittedly looking for a little bit smaller four-wheeler than my 570 Max XT Can-Am, uh, just because that one was really, really long. It is a two-up machine with that Max model, and uh, it was super comfortable, uh, very powerful with that V-Twin 570. Uh, but overall, I wanted something a little bit more nimble for in the woods. And I wanted to go back to a single seat machine. Like I said, uh, my son was born this year. Uh, we actually had a different four-wheeler for my wife. Uh, so really, I didn't need the two-up capabilities. And my son honestly won't be able to ride on trails for quite a long time. Like I said, he was just born this year. So um, I was looking for a little bit smaller machine. And I was looking to save a little bit of money with all the expense that goes with uh, everything I'm going through right now. So I found this machine, again, uh, with less than 800 miles on Marketplace back in January for... The guy was actually asking $6,500, and I got it down to $6,000, which is a pretty good deal for Yamaha. These machines really, really hold their value, uh, whether it's an SE or whether it's not. Uh, but one thing I was really looking for to make sure it had was power steering. I'm a huge advocate for power steering on a four-wheeler, and I know all you muscle men watching this video don't think you need it, but I can tell you the fatigue that comes with not having power steering does wear you out after a long day on the trail, and uh, I can turn a non-power steering four-wheeler as well. But again, taking out that fatigue and taking out some of the big jolts when you hit a rock, uh, it does really, really help to have power steering. So when this machine popped up on Marketplace, I definitely wanted to go look at it. Um, basically, my criteria was power steering, smaller machine, and less than a thousand miles. And that's exactly what I found here with this machine. Now, since I bought it, I did do several different things. I got these Tusk Trilobite tires. Originally, this was just running on the stock tires, which, um, you know, very not very aggressive uh, with what these machines come with. But these Tusk Trilobites, I did actually go up a size as well. I got 26 by 10s in the back. 
and 26 by nines in the front. So it's not a square setup. It is still an offset setup. And uh, these are very clearly a big horn knockoff. But so far, after the 200, 250 miles that I've put on this machine, uh, they have been holding up very, very good. Uh, but I do really recommend the tires, and I'll also really recommend this winch up here. So this is a super winch. I actually found this on Amazon, and it is a 3,000 pound winch, which is probably more than what you need. But at the deal that I found on Amazon, the 3,000 pound was actually cheaper than a lot of the other sizes. So uh, definitely not a bad idea to have a bigger winch than what you need. Uh, should definitely come in handy. And I actually have a snow plow that I'll be putting on this vehicle for the winter. Uh, very interested to get that installed very soon. Now, a couple things that I didn't realize that I was gonna enjoy so much is this 700cc motor. So uh, it is a really good size. 48 horsepower is, in my opinion, kind of a sweet spot for a trail riding uh, ATV. Now, I'm sure if you went out and rode out west where you could really lay into these things, uh, you know, you might want an 850 or a 1000. But for me, riding this kind of trail, it is perfectly adequate to have 48 horsepower. And I think actually the big single cylinder actually adds a lot. So uh, surprisingly enough, coming off of my Outlander 570, that one too had 48 horsepower. But I think uh, this big thumper does really do a good job. Uh, the V-Twin is very, very impressive, but this thing putting along slowly uh, is much more relaxed. That V-Twin and the Outlander really wanted to go. Uh, but a couple things that I also really like, you have your four-wheel drive switch right here, but you slide that out of the way and you actually have a diff lock. So a really, really cool option that's still hanging around here in these newer four-wheelers. A lot of other machines like Can-Am uh, do go with the Visco lock front end for most of their models, and uh, that worked good. I never had an issue with it, but I do, I do like the added security of having a true diff lock. I also love having this tank compartment. So they moved the fuel tank right back here beside the seat. A lot of manufacturers are doing that for weight distribution, but having this big container here, um, basically right between your knees, is really really nice on the trail it does get warm in there uh which is a pro or a con depending on what kind of climate you ride in but i do like having that access right handy uh you know whenever i'm riding it's great actually to keep my gopro in or an extra set of gloves it's not exactly waterproof uh, but it is a really really nice feature i also surprisingly enough really like the third headlight here uh, which is right in front of the gauge vehicle. Uh, I, I do actually really like that. It's great for seeing around turns and that sort of thing. And uh, coming back here to the back, you can really see just how stubby this four-wheeler is. Now, again, it's basically the same size as any other full-size four-wheeler, but coming off of a two-up machine uh, or a, you know an Outlander Max like we were just talking about, this vehicle just feels so nimble. You know, if I have to take off through the woods or, you know, do a little bypass this vehicle is very very nimble and it actually feels like a much smaller machine than my can-am or a lot of other full-size vehicles now you can see we do have this colpin box on the back we have two little latches right here and it opens right up and you can see we have all sorts of storage in there uh, which will be really really great on the trails i haven't used this a whole lot yet uh, but my helmet actually fits in here as well so a really useful little storage area right there Go ahead and close that back up and pretty nifty it is lockable so a uh, nice little box there on the back so overall i am very very happy with this machine i am continuing to customize it as i own it but um you know i think this is largely a pretty overlooked machine so many people uh when they walk into a yamaha showroom are kind of told that the kodiak is the work machine and the grizzly its bigger brother is the more trail rated machine if you want to go that far so i'm not really an advocate for that uh, the grizzly is a little bit wider it does have a little bit more features but the kodiak comes in at uh, you know a, a little bit narrower more nimble um, machine it also has more narrow um, handlebars so if you're a smaller rider or a newer rider i think you might be more comfortable on this machine but it also comes in at a much lower price tag and for me at least for two four wheelers that run basically the, the exact same motor they do have a little bit different clutching uh, but i don't think it's worth the extra money going up to a grizzly now if i would have found a grizzly on marketplace for the exact same price with all the same features yeah i probably would have looked at it but if you're going to a new one in a showroom i don't know that it's necessarily worth it so overall, the way this machine sits, I am still well under $7,000. And I think that's a really good number 
for a Yamaha four-wheeler. Now, again, these things really do hold their value, and even these 708cc engine vehicles from 2016 to 2018 still seem to really hold their value. Now, would I go for a 686 over this? Honestly, I'm not sure. I rode a, a several other older Grizzlies, and I can tell you that this 708 does feel much, much smoother. Now, is that just updates with the fuel injection system or something else? Honestly, I'm not sure. I haven't had an opportunity to ride one of the new 686cc, um, you know, from 2019 and up. Now, will Yamaha ever bring out a new motor? And I think that's something that a lot of people are really waiting for you know will they make say an 850 v twin uh for the grizzly you know people have been saying and waiting on that for some time but overall i think this is a really really good package and i can see the 700 cc sticking around in the kodiak for some time now can this thing do work and you know put through the trails or put up the mountain absolutely but if you want to take a rip down the trail the 48 horsepower and the nimbleness of this machine is still a really compelling package and i am super super happy with my purchase so let me know what you think down in the comment section below uh what is your experience with the 708 i know again if you get on the forums the 708 will scare you but i think there's still a lot of them that you'll find on marketplace or out on the trail that do have say three and four thousand miles on them and they're still going strong so uh, again, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section, but I don't think you can really go wrong with a Yamaha four-wheeler. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a fantastic week, everybody, and we'll catch you next time.